Praise the Lord, dear friends. Thomas Matthew the Fourth. I've been speaking about prayer, and I want to tell you that prayer will release the will of God to you. Uh, it'll help you see clearly the vision that God's placed upon your life. It will help you to um, clear the clutter out of your way. It'll change your atmosphere. It'll change your environment. It will, because, because God will begin to connect new things to you and through you and for you and things will begin to happen in new ways. Things you've been praying for, things you've been wanting to see happen, uh, you know, will just begin to happen. And prayer will begin to connect the right people to you. It'll begin to begin to cause God to take interest in what it is He's ordained for you to do because you've taken interest in it. Now, He has interest in it all the time. He never forgets it, but things go dormant when you lose your connection place with, he with heaven. Please understand that. Please know that. That it's not something to... Um, to fool around with the call of God that's on your life. It's not, it's not something to uh, count as an option. You know, when you experience adversity, it's time to pray. It's time to praise. It's time to worship. When you experience any setbacks, it's time to have a big comeback. Stage it for yourself. You know, there's a saying in the world called fake it till you make it. You ever heard that one? Well, what that means is you can create a, an image. Let me take it into a self-preserving and self-enhancing revelation. You can even cause, you know, you to create a scene and a scenario for yourself of what you want. It's like literally you're prophesying to your future. You're prophesying to your future. You're prophesying to uh, the plan of action that God has. Now, here's another thing. God is the God of prosperity and He's the God of abundance. He's the God of uh, phenomenal blessings. He's not the God of poverty. Poverty comes from the curse of, of uh, disconnection from his will. And then the devil creates things for entire realms of people. Can you imagine people living in poverty, abject poverty, and because somebody created that culture and system for them there. I, I look at places in Africa that I've been to. It's horrific how people can live. It's just like... You know, some people go there and cry. I go there and I have to get out because I get mad. I get very angry. You know, I feel this is pathetic. You know, you, it just unnerves you because you hate it so much. Because it's not the plan of God. God wants you in the best house, the best car, the best clothes, the best life, the best friends, the best accoutrements of life. Everything. And when you're praying in connection, He'll begin to just... Uh, 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 afford those things to you. I want to use another word. How accompany you with those things. That's what I want to say. And everything good, everything great. But it depends on how you're thinking, you know. So when you're in the presence of God and in the will of God, God is the God of brilliance. When you pray, it opens up that realm of creativity and life for you. Oh, my a dull and boring existence, you know, every day, same, same old, same old. <sighs> That's not the plan of God. And somebody said, well, I thought prayer was like work and it's just praying for the lost and praying for the hurting people in the world. Yes, of course it is that. But it's, but it's going to help you. Prayer is your success secret. Oh, my God. I'm writing a book on prayer, aren't I? It's your success secret. It's the secret of unlocking things for you because you, 
you bring God into your uh, into your personal space, into your world, you know, into your habitation. We don't need visitations alone. We need habitations. Visitations must become habitations. When you have a visitation, like a new touch from God, uh, an experience, a visitation, you know, an appearance of the Lord, an epiphany kind of thing, a revelation comes to you or an experience, so you have a great moment when the, the anointing touches you. That doesn't just need to be a once in a while thing. It needs to be an all the time thing. And God wants to give that to you. Wow, I'm telling you. I'm feeling this. Prayer is a success habit. And I said this, it's, uh, success is not really an option for us. It's really a command. It's really our moral duty and obligation to God to be successful. It's not really an option. It's, it's, a, it's a, an absolute obligation. Prayer, the success secret. Nobody's told you that. People say, well, prayer is this laborious thing. We intercede for the nations and for people. Of course we do that. Of course, yes. Absolutely, 100 million percent. But how, how are you going to get into being the primetime player that God has ordained for you to be if you're not like in tune with heaven, you know, like the anointing, something amazing about God's anointing and the, and the Holy Spirit. He will absolutely give you the most awesome, brilliant, brilliance and creative thoughts and imagination and ideas. And, oh, and let me go back to a little foundational point. The first order of prayer is to get yourself free from all oppression, depression, sadness, uh, distraction, delay, denial, devastation, disappointment, discouragement, all of that has to go. Because the Lord, even Himself, He doesn't like a joyless environment. He doesn't like a sad environment. You know, when you're really sad and then you're, the Holy Spirit is not with you strongly because He is the author of joy. He's the giver of joy. He's the giver of peace. He's the giver of confidence. He's the giver of boldness. So when you begin to uh, get into the realm of, of, of where he has, you know, made a platform and a position for you, he comes and shows up and begins to do great things. And then happiness, confidence, joy, peace, begins to begins to happen you know it's just like it's just like impossible to stay depressed where the presence of God is strong because he gives encouragement so prayer number one is to align yourself with God and then for him to get involved in all your situations where you have a great environment it's sad and tragic that kings in this world, rulers in this world, business moguls in this world, even political leaders, some of them in this world, are, are, seem to be very organized, very confident, very strong. And people that say they, they are in covenant with the living God, they're living lives that are really, really out of, out of order according to the plan of heaven's power that he wants to give us on the earth. Let's remember Revelation 5.12. Revelation 5.12 said, he, wants, he said he, he received for us then to give to us power, riches, and I'll explain that more later, but I don't have time right now uh, to, go, to go all into that because I hate to lay a little foundation on that. But, and I've done it before in other messages. There's a message I did called Seven Kingdom Keywords. And I explained how Jesus took it for us, but then he wanted to give it right back to us, because he's God. Does God need to uh, uh, receive power from anywhere? No. He, he established, it's a really a spiritual thing, he established it by the resurrection and brought it all back together for us to receive it. These seven things, power, riches, honor, 
might, which is strength, blessing, glory, and then for the purpose of us having dominion. Now, when you have all those things operating, you can't lose. <laughs> when you have all those things operating, you can't be behind in everything. Something else has clouded the vision of people. Something else has misaligned and misappropriated the connection with God. Something else, culturally, familially, family-wise, I mean, environment-wise, atmosphere-wise, the company, the network. Someone said your friends are like a prophecy of your future. People keep saying that in motivational talks, you know. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. You need to upgrade your, your, your life. You know all this stuff that comes into social media. I turn a lot of it off quick because I don't groove on, you know, the content and level that people are at, the ones that are sharing these. I want to listen to high level people, high level thinkers, and that is available online, okay? You can find millionaires and billionaires talking. You can find people that have the genuine word of the Lord in their mouth, like myself, talking, speaking. So everything that's going on is, everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that's going forth is not the real thing. You know, look at someone's reality and think, where can they take you? Someone can only, you can only take someone as far as you've been. But if you've been with God, you've been with the best. <laughs> And that's what prayer does. It begins to... Uh, so you, you want to think rich, you know. You want to look at like high level things about high levels of living. Find them. Find them. Search for it. Find them. Watch those things. Feed your mind and your imagination. Don't look at low, small things. Look at big things and say, I'm going to have that. And pray and prophesy over yourself that these things that you're seeing are going to become a reality for you in your life. Certain things we pray for happen and are happening, great happenings. You know, I don't, I don't have time to testify and I'm not going to do it anyway. Right here. Uh, I just don't feel like I want to share a lot of things like, like that. God, God's doing so many great things for me, for me, for this guy right here, for me. I mean great things. I mean great, great, great things. Beyond what you can even know about or imagine. Not by accident, because there's a provision for the vision, and there's empowerment for the calling. So we're going to have power, riches, wisdom, strength, might, power, glory, blessing, and honor for the purpose of having dominion. I mean, it takes a lot of stuff for that to, to come forth and to happen. And prayer will bring you back there. Prayer will bring you back there. Prayer will bring you forward to there. And that's where we all need to be going. I, it's a call to prayer. I'm calling the body of Christ. People that are, you know, really wanting to upgrade their life, wanting to go to a higher level. It's time to pray. It's time to get into the presence of God. It's, it's time to uh, really focus on, on the ordained mission that, that he has for us and really get all into it. You know, and stop wasting time. Stop wasting time. Every day is an opportunity to climb to a higher plateau. Today was, tomorrow will be, the next day will be. What do you say about it? What do you think about it? What do you want to achieve? And another thing, when you're weak in the realm of your mindset and your mind and your focus and your decision-making ability to decide what you want to do what you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have, and, and how you're going to carry on with the mission that God's ordained for you, you, uh, you get tossed to and fro. You know, you, if you're weak, you get tossed around. You, you, you go with the stimulus of people, uh, what they're saying or thinking or doing or this event or thing that's going on. Your life is, but your life is an event. It's supposed to be an event all on its own. You're not subject to every other whim of everybody else when you're powerful, when you're strong. You're moving in the course of action and what God has ordained for you. And you know what it is and you know why you're doing it and you know what you want to achieve and you know what you're heading toward. 
because God has ordained you to fulfill a certain thing and to do a certain thing with your life and you need to get on with, the he with heaven's business, with the Father's, Father God's program. Lord, I pray and I pray and I pray and I prophesy that people from today hearing this will begin to experience a new glory, a new visitation, a new happening, a new awakening. Through prayer, things will begin to come into the, uh, uh, the vision and view of people that are listening to this word. And new upgrades are going to happen. New upgrades, new things, new things, new things, new things that you've not had and seen or known before. Greater things that you, than you've known and seen before. Greater riches, greater wealth, greater healing, greater health, greater deliverance, greater strength of mind and imagination, greater focus, greater ability to focus on something and really, really begin to walk on the path that God has for you. And that's what prayer does. More later, I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being my partner. I love you much and I'm praying for you and I'm praying for me and you pray for me and I'm praying for you. And let's all pray for each other. And this is a call to prayer right now for people to get into the presence of God to begin to hear and feel and receive His instructions and His brilliance and His creative power and His creativity. And really get into the flow that He has ordained for us. For the movements that He's ordained. The whole world is waiting. Leadership. Trailblazing glory. Birthing and building of new things. Oh my. It's really, really, really the will of God and the plan of God for you. And for me. And prayer is the thing that puts that together. Yeah, and you know what? I'm, I'm speaking not as a, somebody who's planning something new. We've been doing this a while a long time traveling all over the world but there's a movement that's yet to happen that's huge and we're calling it into motion through prayer we're calling it into motion so I'm praying for you the big thing that God has for you you might be okay you're making a living you're making it you got your people you got your your thing going on all right but not at the level that God has already ordained for it to be in such a bigger, more huge, more magnanimous realm. Oh, oh, there's more. There's a higher road. And Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this thing I do, I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There's a higher realm. There's a higher level of the whole thing that God's called me to. And he was the one that was already doing so much. So there's more, and prayer is the way to get there. Prayer provides the ladder for us to climb up. It gives us that stairway, it gives us that lift, it gives us that elevator, that escalator, that elevation up to the top levels. And you know this, where the, I feel the anointing so strongly. Woo! And where, where the Lord said, uh, I, I, I come before the throne of grace boldly in the time of need, you know, and begin to, uh, <laughs> Be, begin to receive from me you know the mysteries you know Jeremiah 33 3 also said call upon me and I'll show you things that you don't know yet expand the territory you know scripture talks about that first chronicles 4 9 and 10 the prayer of Jabez expand my territory enlarge things and there's so many other places Isaiah 54 talks about that Isaiah 55 verse 4 says a leader and a commander I've made you amongst the people and the people that you don't even know, you'll call them into order. Uh, Isaiah 46, 13, I think it was somewhere in there. Uh, if I remember right, 13 or 16, somewhere like that. Uh, we have to look it up. It talks about the man from a far country that he God called to another place to set things in order. And, you know, this, this, uh, this power of, of winning nations, you know, Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me and I'll give you nations for your inheritance. Come on. 
And that's riches and wealth. That's power. That's real estate. That's people and help and organizations and structures of great, 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 great productivity and abundance, in abundance. Praying, praying it through. And it's happening right now. Father, thank you for your blessing that makes rich and has no sorrow. As you said in uh, Proverbs 10.22, and you said in Proverbs 13.22 that the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous. And thank you, Lord, that you're giving us wealth and riches in abundance. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. From sources even known and unknown, riches and treasures and wealth coming into our hands so we can operate to produce what it is you want. Praying it through, been praying it through, been praying it through. It's happening. Prayer builds this thing. If you wondered about, am I just praying to pray for a few things or a few people? No. Prayer connects God back to you and gives you the platform and sets the whole stage and sets the whole thing up and creates all the connections and all of the things that God has ordained to be in your life. And I declare it's happening right now. More on prayer, coming back to you with more on this. Thank you for being my partner. There'll be some notes on the screen. Go to thomasmanton.com make, and make sure you, uh, the website, my website, and make sure you... Uh, Put your number and your email and name and where you're from in the portal there. And also you can order the book, The Benefits of Excellence, and the DVD on the power to create wealth that I did. We'll send that to anyone who's sowing a generous love gift now in Jesus' name into our world missions. Thank you for being my partner and friend. I'm praying for you. And prayer is more powerful than you even know. Let's get more into it, all of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. Talk to you again on the next... Second, love you in Jesus' name.